Hey guys, welcome to SS Unitech Social this side and today we are going to start a new playlist on Azure Databricks. So this is the introduction video of Azure Databricks. If you have not any knowledge on Azure Databricks, so don't worry. Here in this playlist, you will be understanding each and every concept on Azure Databricks. So let's get started about Azure Databricks. So before going to start with Databricks, I thought we should be going to understand about the Apache Spark. So why Apache Spark is much more important because behind the scene of Databricks, Apache Spark will be working. So that's why Apache Spark is much more important while trying to understand about the Databricks. So first understand about the Apache Spark. So what is Apache Spark? Apache Spark is lightning fast unified analytic engine for big data processing and machine learning. So this is we can say it is unified analytics engine and which is lightning fast and it is used for the big data processing. So here we can process the big data that could be structured data or non structured data. So it is having the ability to process all the data and here we can also implement the machine learning. Next, as I told you, this is 100% open source under the Apache license. So it was introduced in 2K9 and then on 2K10, it was introduced as an open source. Next, it's very simple and easy to use API. So that we will see while we will doing the practical knowledge on the Apache Spark. Next, it is in memory processing engine. It will be going to process in memory. So for example, if you are going to call your number or your family numbers, then you can directly think and you can say like this is my number and this is my family members number. But if I'm asking the mobile number, which is not in your mind, then what you have to do, you have to go on your phone, you have to unlock that and after that you can search and then you can tell the number. So this is the difference between the in-memory processing and disk processing. So if anything is available in the memory, so that will be quick and very faster. But if anything is available in the disk and processing on the disk, so that will be taking little bit time. So this is very fast as it is processing inside the memory. So one question is coming in the mind. If it is going to process in the memory and your memory is 4 GB of the RAM and your data is 20 GB, then how it will be processing? So on that scenario, it will be going to process only 4 GB in the memory and the rest 16 GB will be processed on your disk. So this is how it will be going to process. Now, next is the distributed computing platform. So what it means? So distributed means if we are getting any request for accessing the data or any task, then on that scenario, it will be going to distribute that task into different, different small tasks. So let's assume if we are requesting for 100,000 rows and based on certain date period. And while we are going to request this data, then it will be going to distribute it into different, different nodes and cluster will be taking care for all these. So I have not discussed about the cluster and nodes. So don't worry for now. You can simply understand your request will be going to split into a small task and then we'll get the data from the memory. That will be the parallel processing we can say and we'll get the data quickly. So that is the distributed computing platform. Next, it is the unified engine and it is also supporting the SQL streaming ml and graph processing so that we will see in our upcoming videos next it is integrate closely with other big data tools now next we have to understand about the azure databricks so initially databricks was their own tool and it like the developers from the databricks sits together with the azure developer and will create the Azure Databricks. So Azure is owning this and Databricks can be accessed in other platform as well like the AWS, GPS. So on those plat platforms, we can also access it. But inside the Azure Databricks, it is going to access 
inside the azure portal so those we will see so inside this we are having different different components so first component is the cluster so cluster is the backbone of the apache spark so inside the cluster we can decide how many nodes will be there how many executors will be there so while we'll create the cluster in our upcoming videos you will see in the practical so cluster will be taking care for all these let's assume if we have requested for the data or processing some of the task then cluster will receive that and cluster will decide like how many nodes are free and the task will be going to distributed on those nodes accordingly so cluster is backbone of it next it is having the another component which is the workspace or the notebook so inside the azure databricks we will be going to work inside the workspace and under that we will see the notebooks so these are the jupyter notebooks that you might aware about and here we can write the code on the python java c sharp sql so all those languages it is supporting next it is also having the administrator control next it is optimized speed so as i told you it will be going to process in memory the first thing and the second thing it will be also distributed the task into a small a small task so that will be the parallel processing so that's why the speed is very good next we can also create the database and tables in the apache spark under the azure databricks so those we will see in our upcoming videos we can also implement the delta lake so what is the delta lake we'll see in our upcoming videos in detail but as of now you can only understand if we want to implement the acid property or the versioning so on that purpose we can use the delta lake next it will also support the sql analytics inside the synapse so those features we can use inside the databricks next we can also use the ml flow under the apache spark so all these combined inside the azure databricks so we can say that databricks is the collection of all these so all these components can be accessed and utilized inside the azure databricks and apache spark is having their own libraries so whatever we want to achieve there is no need to go and import the library or use or install another tool for accessing those apache spark is only having their own libraries we can utilize those now here it is also have the integration with the unified billing so what it mean so unified billing so as i told you the cluster is the backbone so cluster if cluster is running you have to pay so it's depend if you are going to use the notebook and running the notebook then cluster will be running and after some time it will be going to stop so you have to not pay if you are not going to use that so it is having the unified billing there next we can also use the messaging services inside the azure databricks so that could be your azure iot hub and azure event hub for the messaging services next we can also integrate with the power bi so this is having the tightly integration with the power bi as well we can also integrate with the azure ml so that option is also there we can also integrate with the azure data factory next we can also integrate with the azure devops and azure active directory and last we can also access the data services which could be like azure data lake azure blob storage azure cosmos db azure sql database or azure snaps so all these can be integrated with the azure databricks so all these will be available inside the azure portal so we can say like all these features is available only inside the azure portal under the azure databricks so we'll see all these features in our upcoming videos in details go to the next slide and here let me tell you about the architecture flow of the azure databricks so at the bottom side you can see like these three which is the yarn mesos and stand alone scheduler so what these three so these three are the clusters so these three clusters could be used at the bottom side because everything will be going to managed on the cluster next in the middle side you will see the spark core so what is the spark core you have to understand so basically spark core 
is contains basic functionality of the spark like the task scheduling memory management fault tolerance interacting with the storage system as i told you it will be going to interact with storage next we can see the spark sql so what is the spark sql spark sql is the package of working with structured data so as i told you inside the dbms we can only process the structured data and here it is also supporting like the different different formats of the source those could be your hype table parquet files and json files so those we will see in our upcoming videos in practical how we can use the parquet file hive table or the json file inside the spark sql and it also allow developers to intermix sql with programmatic data manipulation supports by rdd in python scala or java so these are the languages we can integrate so don't worry if it's not very clear now in our upcoming videos you will be going to see in details for all these next we can see the spark streaming so what it mean spark streaming is nothing but the live data processing so for example on the real time we are receiving the data and we are processing all that data so those options are available inside the database so it is having the very good ability to process the live data in the streaming manner next we can see the ml library so this is basically we can say it provides the multiple types of machine learning algorithm those we can utilize under it ml libraries last is the graphics so we can also utilize the graphics option here so this is the architectural flow as of now you can understand in the bottom we are having the cluster and in between we are having the spark core spark core is not nothing but the task scheduler or getting the requirement from here and accessing your stories so all these will be going to access in the spark core and after that we are having these items which is the spark sql accessing the live streaming then machine learning library so all these next here we are having the some comparison between the azure data factory and azure databricks so what is the purpose of using the databricks over the Azure Data Factory and what are the strong point of the Databricks? So those we will see here. So first classification is the purpose. So what is the purpose of using the Databricks? So first let me tell you about the Data Factory. So ADF is primarily used for the data integration services to perform the ETL processing. So if we are going to process the ETL operations, then we can use the ADF. This is also a very good tool, but here we are having certain limitations. So those we can see inside the Databricks. So Databricks provide the collaborative platform for data engineers and data scientists to perform the ETL as well as build machine learning model. So those machine learning models are not available in the data factory. So this is the first difference that's why we should choose azure databricks over the azure data factory next classification on the ace of use so as adf provide the drag and drop feature to create and maintain data pipeline visually so what it mean if you have worked on the azure data factory or have the little bit idea then it's drag and drop tool and we have to only set up the few things and your pipeline will ready so if we talk about the ace of use then it's easy to use the drag and drop tool inside the azure data factory but azure data bricks uses the python or spark or r java or sql so all these programming languages it is supporting so we can write our code inside the notebook so if you are good any one of these then you can go and you can learn and use it next classification type is the flexibility in coding so this is very important because inside the adf it's have the less flexibility so why it's less flexible because we cannot modify the backend code whatever is written in the backend we can only use that we cannot modify it but inside the azure databricks we can write our code and we can implement it so this is very good and very flexible and fine tuning code so we can write our own code and we can achieve whatever we want to achieve next is the data processing 
so as i told you adf does not support the live streaming so this is the feature is not available inside the azure data factory and we can use the live streaming inside the databricks so this is another very good feature so if thank you so much for watching this video if you like this video please subscribe our channel to get many more videos see you in the next video